Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at lubricating the shock system in the pallet fork. If this is your first time here, my name is Alex and I make videos on watch servicing, repair, and troubleshooting. So if that's something you're interested in, let's get started. I'm going to let you in on a little secret that most new watchmakers don't know. One of the number one issues that new watchmakers have is equalizing the amplitude in the dial positions. Since things like poise errors and gravity don't affect the dial positions, one of the main problems they have that they don't even know is improperly lubricated balance jewels. The next biggest issue is just overall low amplitude. Although there are many things that can cause the amplitude to be low, improperly lubricated pallet stones is a major contributor to this problem. But if you follow these guidelines, I guarantee you'll be lubricating the balance jewels and the pallet jewels like a fucking pro. Let's get to it. Now, there's a bunch of different shock systems that are made, like the KIF and Seiko's Die Shock. But once you understand how they work, you'll be able to service any of them. Now, although it would be unusual to find a shock system that's broken, the main issue that you run into is either in losing the end stone or breaking the retaining spring. Hopefully after this video, that won't be a problem for you. The shock system is made up of two jewels, both of which are mounted in the chaton. The pivot hole jewel is mounted in the chaton, and then the end stone is inserted into the top and automatically held at the right distance away from the jewel hole to be able to retain the oil for the balance staff pivot. The chaton sits in the block, which is mounted into both the main plate and the balance bridge. The retaining spring fits into the block and presses down on the end stone, holding the chaton in its position in the block. Now, before you even start this type of lubrication, you wanna make sure that your work area is perfectly clean. You also wanna make sure that the only thing that you have in your work area are the things you absolutely need to have to do this job. Have everything set up and don't let anything distract you when the jewel is out of the setting. Improper lubrication and sloppy installation of the end stone into the chaton are extremely problematic for a couple different reasons, both of which will affect the amplitude in the dial positions. Number one, the amount of lubrication should be the same on both of the end jewels. And it doesn't matter if you use too much oil or not enough oil, both of these things will prevent the oil from getting up into the pivot hole and staying there. The second thing is that the end stone must be sitting flat in the chaton. If the end stone is sitting at an angle, the two balance pivots will have different amounts of friction, which affects the amplitude which will affect the rate. Now to unfasten the retaining clip, slip the point of your tweezers into one side and gently move that side out. And then the other side. Then just slip your tweezer under the clip and hinge it up. Now the end stone and chaton can be lifted out of the block with your tweezers or with a small point of Rodico. Secure the chaton and the end stone in a safe place and close the hinge if you're planning on running the balance bridge through a cleaning machine. Now, if the end stone didn't separate from the chaton, hold the chaton and using a piece of Rodico, try lifting the end stone off. If it still doesn't come out, you'll need to insert a wire into the jewel hole to push out the end stone. Now, with the two jewels separated, Drop them into your cleaning jar with either IPA or hexane 
and let them soak for a couple minutes. Now remove the chatone and put it in a secure place. Now we can remove the end stone and inspect it for cleanliness. Hold it in a way so that the light crosses over it. When I'm talking about clean, that means it should shine like a mirror. Anything less than that means you'll need to buff the jewel clean. Now, there's basically two ways to polish the jewel. One way is flat side up, and the other is flat side down. Buffing the jewel with the flat side up is very risky, and I probably wouldn't recommend it. It's very likely that it'll just ping off like a tiddlywink. A safer way to polish the jewel is to put the flat side down, add a drop of IPA alcohol to the paper, and then taking a leather buff, lay it on top of the jewel with a little pressure and slowly move it back and forth. The dome top of the jewel presses into the soft leather, holding it in place while you're buffing the jewel. Now, once you have a clean jewel, lightly hold it with your tweezers and just grab a small drop of Mobius 9010 and apply it to the center of the jewel. When looking at the oil in the middle of this jewel, the drop of oil should occupy about 50% of the surface of the jewel. Looking at this dot of oil, it's a little bit too small, so we need to add just a touch more oil. Now we're going to place the chatone directly on top of the end stone. If the chatone is not dropped on correctly, it will spread the oil across the end stone instead of up into the jewel hole. Now if you miss it, go ahead and clean both pieces and try it again. If it's done correctly, you'll see a circle of oil under the end stone. Now looking at the end stone, if you look at the pivot hole, you'll notice a ring of oil directly around it. That's what you're looking for. Now to reinstall the Chateau and Endstone back into the jewel setting. Simply drop it in. Push over the retaining clip. Push one side of the clip in. And then push the other side of the clip in. Now repeat this on the opposite jewel, and that's how you lubricate a balanced jewel. Another type of retaining clip that you'll run into is this Kif style. There are three pins on the spring that hold this on top of the end stone. This hole right here is where they come out. So to remove this, you just want to gently turn the retaining spring. until it comes out, and then you'll be able to remove the chaton the same way as before. To insert it, just lay it on top of the jewel. Get the first pin underneath while rotating it around. I'm using the probe to keep it from being able to fly out. Now with the second pin under the, under the plate, just continue 
to rotate it around. Till the third pin is in place. Then lightly push it down while turning with your probe. Correctly lubricating the pallet jewels in the escape wheel teeth is undoubtedly one of the hardest parts of lubrication to get right. There is sliding friction between these two parts. And although the watch will run without any lubrication there, typically the balance amplitude will be lower. But at the same time, too much lubrication also means low amplitude, as well as contamination if the lubrication spreads. You gotta get it just right. Now there's two main ways to lubricate the pallet jewels. The first is to apply the lubrication directly to the escape wheel teeth. And then the escape wheel teeth transfer the oil to the pallet jewels. This is incredibly hard to do without over lubricating the escape wheel teeth. The second method, which I'm going to be doing, is to add the lubrication to the actual pallet stone, which will transfer the lubrication to the escape wheel teeth. All right, so to begin lubricating the pallet fork, we want to first inspect it for cleanliness and then install it into the movement. Now add just a minimal amount of power to the mainspring. Now there's two jewels on the pallet fork. The one as you're looking at it on the right, this is the entry stone. The one on the left is the exit stone, and that's the one we're going to lubricate. Now take your clean oiler, pick up a tiny amount of grease on the tip, and apply it to the center of the pallet stone. Now we're going to advance the escape wheel until all the grease has been removed from the pallet stone. Normally, all the grease should be off within five to seven teeth. Now, if it takes more teeth than that to remove the grease, you're probably applying too much. Now we're going to add another small dot of grease and then complete the one revolution of the escape wheel so that all 15 teeth have been lubricated. Now at this point, the grease is on all the teeth but it's gonna be heavier on some teeth and lighter on the other ones. Now to correct this, we're simply gonna advance the escape wheel until it makes four complete revolutions. I'll start it and we'll check back in a minute. All right, so now we've let the escape wheel go around four complete times. So the oil should be distributed as evenly among the teeth as it can be. And now we need to check our work. If you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned that too little oil or grease on the escape wheel will negatively affect the amplitude, just like too much will affect the amplitude. We need to get just the right amount. So that's what we need to look for now. Now, luckily it's pretty simple. What you're looking at is the jewel in the escape wheel tooth. When you look at the jewel, the top edge is called the impulse plane. That's where the escape wheel tooth slides across as the watch is running in normal operation. Now, the only part of the escape wheel tooth that actually touches the impulse plane on the jewel is that front edge. The 
other side of the tooth that looks like a boot, that edge actually is up a little bit higher. So what you'll notice is that there will be a wedge-shaped space between the front leading edge of the tooth and the back of the tooth that forms a wedge-shaped gap between them. It's in this wedged gap that the oil is going to beat up or pull. So there's two things that we're going to be looking at. Number one is the position of the leading edge of the escape wheel tooth on the impulse plane. We're going to be looking for it when it's about three quarters of the way across the impulse plane. The second thing we're going to be looking at is how much oil forms under the escape wheel tooth. We want the oil to beat up anywhere from 50 to 75% of the total length of the escape wheel tooth. And we want that to happen when that front sharp edge of the escape wheel tooth is about three quarters of the way across the impulse plane. Okay, so here we go. So focus on that wedge shaped gap between the tooth and the impulse plane. That's where you're looking to see how much oil's beating up in this area. And again, what we're looking for is we, we want it to be at least 50% of the width of the escape wheel tooth, a strong 50% up to about 75%, really no more than that. And as I'm looking at this, it looks to be a little bit light. It's definitely not half the width of the tooth. Um... So again, you want it to be a, a strong half, definitely not a weak half. So it looks like we need to put a little bit more of the lubricant on the jewel, and then we're going to let it run. We're going to do four revolutions of the escape wheel to distribute the oil again, and then we'll check it one more time. All right, here we go now. So again, we're looking at 50 to 75 percent of the width of the escape wheel tooth when it's sitting about three quarters of the way across the pallet jewel and now this is looking a lot better this is looking more like it should it's a minor difference but it makes a huge difference in the timing of the watch so just realize this is going to take practice. You're not going to nail it the first time you did it. But this is the way the escape wheel should be lubricated. And now let's go on to the bonus tip. There's a pretty good chance you're going to lose or need to replace one of your retaining springs. So what I found the easiest thing to do is just roll up a piece of Rodico stick the end of the spring in and use that to hold it while you put it back in the block if you stick it down in the slot you can just give it a little turn and the little feet will go back in the slots they're supposed to be in and then once you get it in there then you should be able to maneuver it around with your tweezer they are super delicate and unbelievably springy so don't try to do it with your tweezers use the rodico it will save your ass more times than I can tell you. Well, guys, that's it for this video. As always, I'm glad you were here with me. If you learned anything, hit that like button. And as always, if you have a comment, a question, or a video idea, please drop them below. And until the next video, I'm out of here.